Hello, my name is Merle Maigre. I am from the eGovernance Academy and we are excited to bring to you a session called Creating a Country Digital Roadmap that actually works. I have with me three speakers. Uh, first, Lynn Narvik, the co-founder and Smart Governance Program Director at the eGovernance Academy. Linnar, great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Then uh, Natalia Goderjesvili, a former legal advisor of the Digital Governance Agency from Georgia. And Kim Morosko, the chief special expert of the Finnish Digital Agency. Well, to start, off, to start us off, 2020 started as a usual year with no significant indications of anything that, uh, that needs to push harder for digitalization. Action plans were all set, governments had their, uh, their own plans lined up, and then all of a sudden the COVID pandemic happened. COVID really was a true disruption. Uh, beyond any PR or marketing rhetoric, this, uh, the epidemic has truly played uh, the role of a disrupting agent. It has changed our ways of doing economy, our ways of social interactions, and it keeps on doing that. Shifting to working and delivering services remotely has been a key element of this crisis. Some countries were more ready for this, others a little less. However, and while before COVID, perhaps the digitalization um, transformation for countries was something that was built up on top of the already existing architecture, sort of like a plan B in case that the, but always making sure that the analog services work. Um, now governments have faced um, with a somewhat unrealistic scenario. What if internet is the only thing that works? Linnar, um, do crises like this foster innovation on your, on your opinion? Indeed. The 2020 and overall the pandemic process has indicated not just that uh, those type of uh, uh, events foster innovation, but they also unleash the innovation. The capacity for innovation is there already. However, there are a number of barriers why it has not been really unleashed. And uh, when we work with eGovernance Academy of Estonia in more than 50 governments around the world, and we have been working with more than 130 governments around the world, we have witnessed really the situation where by 2020, all governments around the world had some sort of digital agenda, some sort of digital roadmaps, but they had little action. Then 2020 suddenly governments had lots of action, but little strategy, which means that those strategic goals were set aside and really they were looking for the new sources of innovation. And we can say that all governments did something because the schools were closed, the public institutions were closed, and uh, they had to find the way forward immediately, in one week, in a couple of days, and that has created a momentum also of fast decision-making, quick reaction, but also seeking for the unusual solutions. And that is what we have witnessed over 2020, the emergence of the innovative solutions, which was not just embraced by society, but is recognized broader internationally. Post 2020 or 2021 now, we have only the question, if that plateau, if that level of digitalization, which provided us with an understanding that things can be made digital, if that momentum remains and becomes more strategic now. And this is where the new so-called 2.0 versions of digital transformation roadmap need to be put also in place. Excellent. Well, building on that, on the 2.0 and on the new momentum, the digital maturity assessment 
I understand, is the first point of departure. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, we have seen that this digital maturity assessment created by the eGovernance Academy has fast become a tool that countries use more and more. What is so special about it? I need to explain a little bit about the overall digital transformation process. It needs to have always very clear goals, what you want to achieve, but it also has always a starting point. The point where your country stands in terms of its digital maturity. And the digital transformation process is just a step-by-step -step working from where you are towards where you want to be. However, we witnessed that many governments did not realize where they really are. Yes, they have had a previous strategies, previous action plans. They have uh, had also a certain monitoring tools available, including also the global monitoring tools like e-government index of United Nations, uh, World Economic Forum, technology transfer indexes, innovation capacity indexes, but really they were not able to capture where they really are right now from the perspective of digital maturity, which is not a entirely new term and concept, but which was used earlier in enterprise level and private sector. All we did in Estonian e-governance academy is that together with the partners like UNDP, we created a model which looks to the central government and public administration from the digital maturity perspective. And that includes over 10 dimensions, out of which only few are related to traditional technology components. So we start looking to the digital maturity from the leadership, policy level, institutional setup level, whether there are really institutions in place to take responsibility for certain areas, including cybersecurity, including digital identity, including also monitoring the infrastructure or providing the telecommunication uh, services without any disruption. And also, we are looking to the different uh, administrative setups. All countries have very different layout in terms of how the governance in countries is organized. And that is also something which in some cases needs more attention in order to make sure that you understand that making things digital needs more effort. We look also to the skills available and skills needed, and then the technology components the core technology components, which we always call a roadmap for the presence of the digital identity, the level of services which is used, the way how different registries and databases either are digital or have the way forward towards the digitalization and how they can be interconnected in secure manner to provide the services in the digital format for society. And to end, it also includes the resilience, cybersecurity framework, because those services are no longer just nice to have, but they are critical for society, which means also that they need to be addressed as a critical for society without any disruption. And to conclude, regulatory framework, which needs to be enabling. So all those components in total compose the digital maturity where you can see where you right now are, what are the potential bottlenecks, what are your strengths, and then you are able to have a fair look to that mirror and say this is a way we are going to build our digital transformation roadmap towards a vision. Excellent. Well, thank you for laying it out so clearly to us. And as a as a as a, someone who works for the cyber as a cybersecurity expert at the eGovernance Academy, I of course uh, have um, feel very passionate about the resilience part and the cybersecurity. However, uh, as a quick follow up, in um, uh, when countries design these digital roadmaps, 
Um, obviously, every country uh, needs to take uh, into account their specific objectives and and um, and tools to take them there. However, um, is there something universal? Can you outline any sort of like universal elements uh, in emerging economies in in this digital country roadmap? I would stress out that uh, the need for holistic view is there. And also, I would like very much to stress out that uh, there have been different decades, as I would like to call them, in terms of digital transformation. From 1970s till 1990s, the uh, primarily focus of applying information technology and digitalization was internal efficiency of certain organizations or enterprises. From 2000, with a, with, a, with a widespread use of internet, PC technology, and broad access to the internet and information technology, it became obvious that the focus became cross-institutional, all government holistic approach. From 2010, the primarily focus became end-user services and end-user value how to deliver digital services in a seamless way through the mobile, through the smartphone, through the uh, on-demand based services. And right now we are in a situation where governments, when laying down the digital transformation roadmap, they can't look just to the public administration, to the government, but they also need to lay down the connections and mutual interaction with the key economic sectors and players, such as sectors of financial services, transport and logistics, in some countries, industry, in some countries, agriculture, in some countries, tourism. The key economic sectors need clearly to see the benefit of digital transformation of the government and society as a whole. And they need also to understand what they can do and what they need to do as a sectors to amplify the impact of digitalization. Thank you, Linnar. This is fascinating. And I think it's unique that you take a big picture look at these things. But now turning to um, a view from a country, Nata, I wanted to ask you, from your perspective in Georgia, how do these evaluations work, um, evaluations such as the Digital Maturity Assessment or the National, uh, National uh, Cybersecurity Index, how they actually work for a country like Georgia? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to share with you a Georgian perspective how we use uh, international benchmarks and in particular digital maturity assessment and national cybersecurity index in our work. And it may be a good example also for other countries to see why a such country needs these external tools for evaluation. What are the big challenges or maybe something to be considered on the way when Country X does this kind of assessments. And what is the big impact? So let me just concentrate on these three topics and lead to the conversation in, in this angle. Uh, well, I will, cons uh, when we speak why Georgia need, needed assessment, I picked up three key pillars in order to develop our digital and cybersecurity ecosystem in order to measure it. In, and in order to benchmark ourselves in comparison with the whole world. In terms of development, yes, uh, obviously every country has its own journey to digitalization and cybersecurity development, but within our own journey, we may miss something. We may not pay concrete attention to all these key building blocks, components and pillars that are essential. Digital maturity assessment, as well as National Cybersecurity Index, gives us this kind of big picture or the basket of all the pillars that we have to 
take into consideration. And also not just one by one, but also see how they are interlinked with each other and interdependent. Measuring strengths and weaknesses of our digital and cyber ecosystem is the second why we do this assessment and uh, reflecting it then into our own uh, frameworks is essential. Benchmarking provides a very good opportunity to evaluate country as a one single in, uh, state in comparison with other states in the region where we are. Are we in the leading position or standing behind? How our position interlinks with the whole world's development into the digitalization era? These are the key whys why Georgia uh, tried uh, very hard from the beginning of this National Cyber uh, Security Index and now with Digital uh, Transformation Roadmap to see maturity assessment why, uh, why we started working together with our foreign colleagues to do the assessment. Let me stress from the beginning that uh, the process is not really very easy and any country can have quite a big uh, basket of problems. And one of the key uh, I have to mention is uh, resources. Identifying who should do the uh, self-assessment as such, uh, because uh, both digitalization and cybersecurity are complex uh, and multidisciplinary areas and not just one single public servant like me uh, or like one agency can undergo the assessment. You need a team. And this team should be composed not only within the public sector, but you need allies from the private uh, agencies as well. That is why uh, back uh, starting from 2016, Georgia created a team of assessors, uh, public servants with the, and uh, private colleagues, private sector colleagues, together with whom we just pleaded the work and have undergone uh, the whole process pillar by pillar, component by component. And sometimes let me uh, assure you that you may know that, yeah, of course, I've done this capacity, I've done that, I'm complying with whatever uh, pillar there, but finding the fact-based uh, uh, evidence is not uh, very easy. Uh, you have to search for the press releases, for the official documents, for the uh, translation of the legal acts, uh, policy uh, interviews of the public uh, sector representatives, political leaders, and combine and make a big uh, folder of all the evidences. And it takes quite a lot of time and uh, it's, it's also very resource consuming uh, stuff. Next also is the discussion of the outcomes with, uh, with the external assessors, with the, those guys who are dealing with the maturity assessment and National Cybersecurity Index and negotiate with them. And Georgia had a good example of cooperation with the Estonian colleagues in that regard, uh, where we had quite a lot of series of uh, uh, interviews where we state that, oh, yeah, something is missing, uh, some score is not proper, we have to negotiate, we have to challenge, we have to discuss the outcomes. And it also a big lessons learned in that regard, what can be considered as a positive outcome or the negative outcome and uh, how you have uh, to have a proper indicators in place. And also very, very importantly uh, for us is making this process sustainable. Uh, because evaluation is not just done once and it's not a single job, but it's the ongoing process. And again, in order to overcome the challenge that uh, people change, public servants uh, change their positions, but the work needs to be continued, what Georgia has uh, done that in our legal document, we explicitly mentioned that digital governance agency as a lead uh, digital uh, authority in the country uh, is responsible for having this international benchmarks up to date to provide this systematically new information to the maturity 
assessors and the indicator um, upholding agencies. Uh, so uh, these are the four key fun key challenges that any country has to think about when doing the international assessment. In terms of the impact uh, impact of international indexes and maturity assessment at NCSI in Georgia has been uh, uh, multiple, impacts have been multiple. First of all, uh, when you have whether good as well as bad position in whatever indexes makes your political leadership more cautious, more knowledgeable, and uh, it creates ownership that, yeah, we have to move forward. Next year, we have to be a bit far ahead when we are right now, not to be behind of the developing world. And this knowledge, together with ownership, uh, provides better opportunities for budgetary support to the digitalization and cybersecurity uh, development. It increases public awareness at the same time uh, from just general public, not, not only specialists. All the pillars and the scores in these pillars gives us also a very good opportunity to align uh, the results in our national frameworks. Uh, you can see Georgian uh, national cybersecurity strategy as well as the legal framework, which explicitly mentions national cybersecurity index and our score there and where we are far ahead and where we are lacking behind. Uh, these uh, indexes and the work associated to that also gives a very good opportunity for building better networking and communities, strong community building internally within the Georgian digital and cyber security stakeholders, as well as externally with the assessors and with the index upholding agencies. And last but not least, uh, what we've experienced from Georgian case Good standings internationally provide a very, a very, very nice opportunity for international tourists. We had digital tourists, cybersecurity tourists coming to Georgia, foreign delegations who want to see how and why and in which terms Georgia made a progress in order to replicate the, that um, results that in their respective countries. Um, finally, uh, let me also just share with you the screenshots from different presentations and public speeches or media, media coverage where National Cybersecurity Index, our place there, our ranks and comparison with other countries was very, very actively discussed. And last but not least, let me also state that when a country demonstrates a willingness to be subject to external assessment, it shows that it is transparent. It shows that it is ready for open discussions, fact-based discussions. And finally, all this creates trust, international assistance and donor help and many foreign cooperation projects will be final result out of that openness, transparency, and willingness to cooperate. Thanks. It was just very short from my side. Excellent. Well, Nata, thank you very much for sharing your views about this from Georgia. And I'm really glad that this cooperation between Estonia and Georgia, um, USS, is, is, is on your assessment, is, is being uh, um, helpful and useful. As a short follow-up, uh, Nata, up until very recently, you uh, you used to work uh, at the uh, Digital uh, Governance Agency of the country of Georgia, which, as its core functions, has three areas: the um, digital governance, data exchange, and information security. Well, upon that experience, when a country develops a digital country roadmap, would you say that? the country has to focus on all these three areas in parallel? Or is there one area that is more important, so to say, and, and should be prioritized over the others? If you could quickly sort of like share your view on that. Thanks. Sure. Uh, 
I would recommend uh, to start doing all this free stuff simultaneously. Uh, and why? Uh, cybersecurity, digitalization, and data exchange uh, work hand in hand. If you make a new service, new e-service, but don't think about its security, it can undermine the whole trust and security and usage of the system. Because as a citizen, I want to use a service where my personal data can be leaked or I can be subject to any kind of attack. So in order to have a solid and robust digital ecosystem, you need to, uh, at the same time, simultaneously, at the design stage, think about cybersecurity, safety and security of those systems. While data exchange infrastructures are the best way to make efficient and effective digital processes within any country. So my recommendation, like we've done in Georgia and like you done in Estonia, is in the beginning to combine uh, these three aspects and start doing and developing it at the same stage. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Now, building on uh, your views from Georgia, I would like to turn the attention to Finland, to Helsinki. Kimmo, thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us here today for the panel. And uh, sort of to kick, uh, to start you off, uh, I would ask a similar question to you on, on your experience um, and Finland's experience. When a country develops digitization, is it just the digital transformation that you need to focus or, or is cybersecurity also important? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for the invitation for this very important event as well. So um, I have a few slides over there, and let's have a look if I can change the first one over here. Yes, it works. Excellent. So um, I'm going to give some uh, examples and some lessons learned. And the first lesson is from this picture that we should cooperate much more I don't mean only in uh, national level, but also international level. And this is an, a good example, this event for that. So please join to my networks, either in uh, LinkedIn or in Twitter. Um, of course, most of my tweets and my posts are in Finnish, but there are some English as well. And also every material I can have in English, I will publish using my social media. So I'm quite active in social media nowadays. Uh, so, how we are doing uh, in generally in digital transformation? A couple of slides for, from that view. Well, as you all know, Finland has a really long history with high tech. Uh, probably most of you have used Nokia mobile phones uh, during the last 20-25 years. Uh, they still exist, but uh, not in in same uh, kind of devices as they used to be 10 years ago. Uh, we succeed quite well in these uh, different kind of indexes related to, for example, good government or this European Digital Economy and Society Index. And one reason for that is that we have this long history. We have high-tech culture. We have uh, many companies who can provide us uh, digitalized services. Uh, then, on the other hand, uh, I always like to bring up uh, bring this slide where Finland has been ranked the happiest country in the world. Now we are even, uh, if I remember right, the fourth yes, the fourth concert good year running. Uh, many of uh, many foreigners who visit Finland, they think about that. Well, uh, you don't look that happy, but well, we we laugh inside us. We are outside, we are not that happy, but inside we are quite happy, actually. Uh, much happier than we look outside. And on the other hand, uh, how about this uh, last year? Are we still happy? Uh, well, if I look at the Finnish media, uh, and I, I would, let's say, drop from the space to Finland and start reading only Finnish media, I would think that, uh, well, it's quite an interesting country because everybody is complaining something. But uh, if we look, for example, this online work by COVID-19, uh, 
we managed to do it that very well. And one reason for that was that our services were able to scale uh, for tele teleworking or remote work. So that's a good example that why we should keep up uh, taking new technology in use. So in this case, uh, COVID-19 uh, helped us, uh, of course, to take uh, other new services in use as well. Uh, uh, I work in uh, Finnish digitalization agency, and we published uh, last month a report uh, related to future trends. Uh, if you get uh, this my presentation in PDF form, there's a links. There are a lot of links for more information. Unfortunately, this is uh, available in Finnish only, but this is the English version. So, uh, of course, you have to uh, look for the future as well. And there are five areas which we have detected that we have to uh, concentrate in the future as well. And the one I'm going to take from this picture is this security environment. It's really fast changing and diversifying. And I'm talking about that a little bit more. Just find the next slide over there. So what are our uh, challenges concerning cyber world? And especially uh, if we think about uh, our citizens. So we humans are under an attack in digital world. Uh, for example, here in Finland, we receive about a million scam calls. For example, the, those famous Microsoft support tech calls every month. Think about it, one million. Uh, I uh, started a campaign last October when one of those uh, scammers caught me and then uh, it uh, got quite huge media here in Finland. And uh, after about a week, about 1.5 million Finns knew that, that when a Microsoft uh, support calls call you, don't answer it or uh, quit the call when they said they are from Microsoft. Now they know that they are uh, scam calls. Then, uh, of course, we receive a lot of email frauds. Uh, there was a statistics a few weeks ago that there's a, about a one, million, uh, 1 billion messages sent a day, uh, each day. Think about it, 1 billion emails. Also, we have all uh, find web pages where there are pop-ups where you are going to win something and actually you are going to lose money if you go there. We are receiving different kind of SMS messages. And unfortunately, the cyber criminals have found out that, of course, the COVID-19, it's a nice team. Uh, we can use that as well. And of course, in social media, uh, at least a couple of uh, times in a week, some uh, person try to come to my networks, but uh, I don't accept everyone. But now everyone who is seeing this, my presentation, of course, I can see you from here as well. So I probably trust you enough and uh, I will accept you to my social networks. But of course, I, I check your profile. So it's not only uh, our users, citizens, but also our ICT services are under attack. Uh, last year, uh, and actually, the last six months are really worried uh, concerning what has happened. There was a huge uh, hacking uh, cyber espionage campaign starting uh, last November. Uh, this uh, March, uh, for example, in Finland, uh, concerning these on-premises Microsoft Exchange servers, probably 25% of them were hacked because they were vulnerable. Uh, because of this COVID-19, the cyber criminals have done a lot of network scanning because now, th now they know that we are working from home. So they try to find vulnerabilities. And according to many studies, uh, there has been more uh, different kind of uh, denial of services attacks during the pandemic year. And of course, new data leaks from social media uh, data scraping, not necessarily a data breach, but data scraping, kind of a new uh, method for collecting data. And the main thing from this slide is that how we maintain public confidence and trust when they read about news from these kind of events or when they lose their, their data and how we keep our system secure. You have to uh, think about this when you start uh, 
uh, your digital transformation for new services, for example. And how do we develop? So, of course, we use different kind of uh, statistics and indexes, uh, not only for digital transformation, but also cyber digital security. Uh, this is quite old, and if I'm right, uh, ITU will publish the next version of this, uh, maybe probably this summer. I somewhere read about that, maybe June or July, they are going to publish the next version. Uh, but then uh, our favorite, of course, the NCSI index. Uh, I will discuss more about that, how we use that. There we are in position number eight. And one thing I'm really glad is that our uh, level, uh, not only in the uh, National Cyber Secur Security Index, but also in the digital development level, they are quite equal. So there is no big difference between them because uh, that's it should be like this one. Uh, of course, uh, there are some countries where the cybersecurity in index is much higher than the digital development level, but, but uh, in, in Finland case, uh, we are quite happy about this current situation. Uh, then, uh, when we think about those uh, statistics or indexes, uh, everybody has to remember that, that higher rankings, they don't stop any cyber attack. This is a national level. Uh, it depends on how the legislation, cooperation, preparedness, capacity building is done uh, in different areas of uh, cybersecurity, for example. But every organization has to develop, of course, their own security capabilities, prioritizing and uh, using some kind of methods to find which of their services are more critical than the others but not only for the uh, company itself, but also for the whole society. We are, we are living now so complex networks that actually, uh, if I block some uh, cable, I don't necessarily know what is going to happen, let's say not, not in another country, but let's say in, in one, my country and in another uh, company or organization. So the complexes, complexness of this uh, digital world is becoming a much more uh, bigger issue in the future as well. Uh, of course, we have done this for many, many years. Our first uh, cybersecurity strategy was published uh, 2013. Uh, two years ago, there was a new version and we have had already two programs and uh, the forthcoming new program will be uh, published probably by this summer. We have other uh, uh, publications as well and for uh, for the public sector, which I actually represent more, I am going to show you a framework because uh, I, I speak about cybersecurity, but I speak about digital security because uh, in different countries, uh, we define uh, different ways what cybersecurity means. And here in Finland, we use this digital security framework for public sector, which uh, includes five different areas. First, we have to have risk management because everything is based on that. Then we have to have continuity management and preparedness because uh, nowadays, let's say 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we didn't have to think about that. Well, there are bad guys, there are cyber criminals. We don't have to uh, think about those. But nowadays, uh, bad thing, things happen. So the continuity management is very important. And of course, the traditional information security as well. Uh, GDPR, uh, it will celebrate its third year, uh, third year, 25th of May. So uh, data protection is, is even more uh, uh, important than it used to be three or five years ago. And all of these four uh, different areas, uh, they are necessity uh, for cybersecurity. And this is the reason why we use here in Finland this framework for public sector. It's not only information security. It's not only risk management. You have to develop all of these uh, five areas. And you have to find uh, which one is the leakiest, uh, which one is the... Uh, uh, leakiest link, uh, worst link in, in your society and uh, develop that further. Uh, then uh, for the uh, public sector, 
we were happy to have a new government resolution last year where there's a program where we started uh, developing all of these areas. And this is a long program. It will end uh, 2023. And this is uh, mainly for the public sector, but especially there for our municip municipalities. So because we find out that uh, municipalities are excellent targets for cyber criminals, and that's the reason why we publish this. Uh, this is available for download, and I think it's available there in English as well. But my final uh, slide, uh, six uh, lessons learned. The first one was actually that uh, let's do more cooperation, it's also in there in number five. But of course we need management support. And in Finland we have had it, uh, for example, these uh, government resolutions, other projects we have had, uh, of course it's not possible if we don't have uh, the support. The second one is the personal competence and awareness. As I showed you, uh, our users, our citizens, they are under attack. If they don't know what to do, uh, if there comes some kind of a suspicious email or suspicious link, probably they click it instead of that they should delete it. And well, this is also the easiest way uh, to educate them and the cheapest way instead of different kind of, for example, technical solutions or gateways. Preparedness and continuity. Uh, so far, uh, we haven't had any major blackouts, for example, in, in Finland related for internet network. And uh, situation awareness. We have to know better what's happening in our networks, in our environments. Uh, there are quite many organizations that they don't know actually uh, what their networks are, what their servers are, what their services are. So that's uh, one thing that you have to really keep on your mind. You have to know what, what kind of environment is your uh, ICT based on. And of course, this my favorite one is this cooperation uh, in, in a country level, local, national level, but also more, we should have this kind of cooperation between uh, countries and to share best practices. And of course, measuring progress. And we use their NCSI uh, as a one tool for measuring uh, how we are doing. So I think this was my last slide, yes. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kimmo. Thank you very much for this very comprehensive and thorough overview uh, of, of the digitalization and all this, also the cybersecurity uh, view from Finland, a uh, view from Helsinki. Well, um, meanwhile, I would like to encourage all our viewers to ask us questions in the chat, and I shall be able to read out these questions in a little while. But, so to say, to, uh, to, uh, 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 to warm us all up in the uh, Q&A session, I would like to ask you all um, sort of like this um, kickoff question. Uh, when developing a digital country roadmap uh, for, a, for an individual country, on your view, what is uh, a, an element or whether there is an element that is underrated? that doesn't deserve enough attention. Linnar, perhaps uh, starting from you first. Thank you. I would like to give a compliment to our panelists from Georgia. Thank you so much for bringing up the importance of impact. The, we, we too often tend to think about digitalization in uh, very vague and, uh, and uh, non-concrete terms. But impact is something which you want to achieve for. And impact of the digital transformation needs to be something which is extremely tangible and clear. So all the digital strategies we are building for different countries, governments, from e-governance academy perspective, we try to incorporate immediately the concept of impact and the measurability which was very much highlighted also by presentation of Kimmo, including also once more congratulations to, to Finland for setting up a digital security framework. Frameworks are and remain extremely important because we are moving in uh, 
very fast change environment, especially from the technology perspective. And it may seem to you as kind of random acts all around, unless you have a framework to understand where those acts are positioning. So I, I'm most happy for the fact that we had already a panelist and presentations which brought up the key importances from the lessons we have also learned at the Estonian e-governance academy. Thank you, Linnar. Nata, uh, is, do you feel there is a field that does not um, receive enough attention in this digital country roadmap that, um, that, that you'd like to speak about? Uh, speaking from the Georgian perspective and our experience, I have to say that we as such didn't pay very good attention or enough attention to uh, implementation of the principle of whole of nation. And here I mean proper cooperation, coordination and communication. Uh, there are instances when country develops, develops a certain service, uh, which it may think that it's very relevant and very needed at that concrete moment. But if we see from the demand side, it's not the case. So here we have the lacks of clear communication with the public, communication with the stakeholders, understanding what nation, what country as such needs. Because sometimes we think that digitalization or digital transformation and cybersecurity it is the uh, key task of the government. But it's not like that. It is the task of every one of us. And you have to ask me as a citizen of Georgia or you as a citizen of Estonia, who this country really, what the country really needs, because governments sometimes don't have all the answers to the questions. So in my understanding, in the raw digital transformation roadmap, clear communication, involvement of all key stakeholders, involvement of information society, what is to be done first, second, and third should be negotiated, discussed, and the whole of nation approach should be designed in that in that case very clear thank you kimmo uh, your view from finland is there an area that deserves uh, more attention uh, than than is not currently given on digital transformation i believe you may be muted uh, yes Yes, thank you. Uh, excellent question. So, because I'm a kind of a cybersecurity and a digital security guy expert, of course, uh, we need more to emphasize the importance of these things because, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a year ago or two years ago, we had this problem that because there hasn't happened any major uh, incidents, for example, major data breaches or something else, uh, uh, the leaders, the management thought that, well, we are doing uh, quite enough because nothing has happened. But fortunately, I have to say that uh, we had a, a quite large uh, cyber attack about almost two years ago against one of our larger cities. So that uh, was a wake up call that, well, bad things really happened. So if there's a country where happens nothing related to cyber criminals or different kind of cyber attacks, the leaders, the management might think that, uh, well, we have enough resources for developing our cybersecurity. We don't have to put there any more money or resources. But that used to be that kind, because nowadays for the past six months, for example, uh, here in Finland and because I follow, uh, try to follow quite a many different country and international news. There's been huge uh, amount of new attacks in different countries. For example, in, in Finland, we, uh, if we have had, let's say, two or three major attacks here in Finland, the similar has happened almost all of the Nordic countries, uh, other European countries, all over, all, all over the world. So I hope that our leaders, the management now understand 
that uh, we are not going to uh, go any any better times. And because of the COVID-19, of course, uh, cyber criminals, of course, the uh, state level actors, they have have time and uh, reason to develop their own methods as well. And of course, because they can use uh, techniques which they don't have to, let's say, uh, buy like this uh, or develop a new methods. They can uh, develop their own criminal uh, ways much easier than we can develop our own protection methods. So that's the reason why I hope that this cyber uh, digital security, it will be uh, much more uh, valued in the future as well. Thank you. Very wise. Well, thank you the, uh, for the audience, for the question. We have uh, a question and uh, I would like to uh, direct that to you, Linnar. In a different uh, approach uh, and context for, for different uh, regions like Africa, uh, do you think that would require a different strategy or uh, would you see the value of the digital country uh, roadmap as well as the digital maturity assessment? In general, those models, digital maturity assessments, National Cybersecurity Index, they have designed to be universal and to be benchmarkable, to be comparable, and also to be something which is a continuous exercise where you can and are able to, to see your progress. So in terms of universality, those models apply to all the countries. However, whenever we are helping to design the digital transformation roadmap, Yes, the biggest asset for any society in 21st century is to understand and to have a vision of where you want to be, who you want to be. But it all starts, as every trip, by understanding also where you are and how to get there. So in context of Africa as a continent, with a huge opportunity to really benefit from the digital transformation process, but also many other regions and countries around the world. The, all the strategies need to be different and country-specific, taking into account your specific present situation, which we help to make understand governments with our digital maturity assessment. And then you are able to see where to unleash re really your potential and what are the next steps forward. Thank you very much. Well, um, I, I have okay. a, one comment uh, for that as well. Uh, for when we talk about cybersecurity or digital security, uh, we all have the same threats all over the world the cyber criminals, the state level actors. So I hope and think that the uh, actions against them and all those uh, techniques should be also common. So we should cooperate more because the threats are the same. So the solution should be the same as well. Thank you, Gimmo. Very wise. And I definitely join you in the uh, cooperation, in the need for more cooperation. Well, we've close, uh, seamlessly come to a sort of like almost closing of our, our panel, but to sort of like leave us all with a positive thought. Maybe I would ask uh, uh, all of us in a, in a sort of like 10, 15 seconds to say one positive thing that COVID has brought along either to the digital transformation or the digital security, either for you personally or for the, for the organization. So that not to speak only about the COVID as a disruptor, as a something evil. Kimmo, can you uh, start us off in that round, please? Yes, excellent question and excellent ending. Uh, for example, for me, uh, now I can decide if I'd like to start my work 7 a.m. in the morning or 9 uh, a.m. or 11, or should I stop at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, or even, let's say, 9 o'clock. So that helps me a lot. And that's because of the COVID and the remote work, it will stay forever. I, I think in Finland, we, we are going to stay much more uh, in our homes in the future as well. Nice. Nata. Uh, I just joined Kimo in this uh, in this direction. I quitted public servant and started my remote consultancy work during the COVID and I very much enjoy it. Excellent to know that remoteness has some, some blessings in it. Uh, Linnara, you've got the last word. Thank you so much. And I think uh, 
we need to understand that uh, last year was a digital accelerator, global digital accelerator, and things that happened would otherwise take from societies, government, and individuals at least for a decade. So it's a decade in one year of digital acceleration. Excellent. Well, thank you all. You were watching the Creating a Country Digital Roadmap that really works, brought to you by eGovernance Academy. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being with us. Take care.